The manif manifesto, I, I know it, many of you may have only seen the cover and not had a chance to read it, but you had many examples or much of the content, including what President Mama will do in the first 100 or 120 days. It's a very unique um, proposal to come from any incoming president. Most incoming presidents are fairly confused about their activities, but the advantage of a, a former president is he already knows the ropes. He knows exactly what decisions should be taken. And he's also made it clear to Ghanaians the specific decisions that he will make in the first 100 to 120 days. So I think that's a, one of the best signals that anybody needs to know about how prepared anybody is for any position such as the presidency of the Republic of Ghana. It's not a, a position that we should take lightly. And especially because this government has debased the whole country, taken it completely into bankruptcy and undermined all public institutions from the executive branch itself where a lot of misconduct has taken place to the legislative branch where they have been fights in parliament on, on global television all the way to the judiciary where many other funny things have taken place and also to the state institutions, whether it is national security, whether it's the Office of Special Prosecutor, whether it is the specific ministries and agencies, where a television station, you are a television station. Can you imagine your station being given three million according to a minister? And then your CEO says, oh no, we only got 100,000 at TV3. You know, I mean, such things are happening in Ghana today. And you don't hear the MPP screaming foul. I mean, you, you should hear ordinary MPP say, no, 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 this is not what we are expecting. But it's as if they keep quiet thinking that that money that's what they are stolen, their own is in it, that the money will be shared with them. The money is not going to be shared with anybody. The money has just disappeared. And that's how Ghana became bankrupt. Three million here, 12 million there, 15 million here, there. You heard the list that Okuja to Ablakwa, you know, presented at the end in terms of the many, many corruption scandals and you are also in the media so you there are over 100 corruption scandals unfortunately there were a similar 100 cases against NPP when Kufo left office and as our colleague Honorable Kwamina Ahoy wrote in a book the NDC at the time and the Professor Mills was ready to prosecute these over 100 cases President Rawlings then accepted it and said, yes, this is a very good idea. Go ahead and, and prosecute. But according to the book, some of them went to President Mills just to, of course, inform him that this is what we are going to do. And President Mills said, no, he's father for all. He wanted to encourage a new thinking in Ghana where we can f forgive in order to uh, avoid, you know, infanti itim namakam recriminations. But the good intentions of Professor Mills have been badly maligned and undermined by this MPP government. You know, because what Professor Mills was hoping to do was that if all the sins of the MPP could have been forgiven them, then hopefully the sins will not occur again. But this is even worse. It has, it has even, because President Mills forgave. For, forgave, MPP like to think that and this, they, when they came, they didn't do anything wrong. That's, the, that's what they say, actually. When they go on platforms, that the NDC has no evidence against them from the first time. So they, they were all innocent. They never committed any offense. And that's why they have been encouraged now to dip their hands and fingers into every pie and everything that, that moves. Putting us all into complete bankruptcy. The, the statistic that was not... That didn't come out in this particular Presentation. event. Yeah. Is the statistic depending on what the day of the month and the day of the year, where every Ghanaian citizen, man, woman, and child, even a child born today, begins life with a debt over their heads. The public, the public debt stock, per capita debt, depending on who you believe, between twenty-five and thirty thousand cities per child, and of course because of exchange rate depreciation of the city, the number can, keeps changing. That's, that's what every student, every pupil in every school, every household must be aware of. If it's not a joke, and that debt is not going to be paid by Agufado and his family members of the Ijapadia tradition, they have left that debt 
believing that they are going to run away from Ghana after they lose the next election, and that we will never find that money. But people are going to make sure that the money is found. You know, so the record of NDC is very clear. Okuja to also try to make the point about the difference between the two parties. So you are talking about a party that Kwame Nkrumah, we in NDC believe in what Kwame Nkrumah did for Ghana. You know what MPP believes? Sam Nkrumah no. That's MPP believe that Nkrumah was Sa Nkrumah Nkrumah no. So the Nkrumah doesn't belong to MPP. They've made it clear. So who, who does who, who then de deserves to inherit Nkrumah's legacy? If Matopoku Pempa believed that Nkrumah was nobody and is not worth even considering, the man who built a, a country, you see the Accra to Amuto way, road construction, just about 20 miles of road. You know, nobody has ever attempted to re replicate that example. No government in 60 years. So that tells you something. And there are many other things that we all, you know, attribute to Nkrumah era, the Volta River project, etc. But if somebody comes and does not even respect Nkrumah, but wants to be a vice president of this country, we can't take that person seriously. But that's part of the tradition. It's that tradition which comes only to, to rape, to pillage, and to bankrupt. That's the tradition. We come to build, and then they come and destroy. And we don't want any further destruction of the Ghanaian economy and the Ghanaian family traditions. If you give them a chance, they, have, they, they start introducing a certain program in human sexuality, etc., in the schools, which have literally le legalized socially and culturally the LGBT thing. And yet it's an NDC MP who has been fighting that LGBT thing in Parliament. They are standing on the sidelines, hoping that, as President Kubado actually said on a hard talk interview, that oh, if Ghanaians put enough pressure on the system, it will become part of Ghana's culture or Ghana's laws. So that's their mindset. We shouldn't be confused about the mindset of MPP at all. It's a competition, not about projects, who built hospitals, who built roads. Yes, that's also part of it. Who did more telecoms. It's about the mindset. Who has the right mind to be in charge of Ghana's affairs? MPP have demonstrated blatantly and clearly they don't have the right mind, the right spirit, the right attitude, and the right policies. NDC has the right policies and the right people. Thank you very much.